The general idea of software engineering and software engineering design is to go from customer needs, the user needs or any other stakeholder needs to requirements which summarize how the system should behave and what we want so that we can create analytical architecture by creating the UML designs needed to uh, guide the development team to implement the software. On this part, see, uh, also something like BCE analysis is needed because from the analytical architecture where we can have the requirements defined and assigned to a sort of logical uh, logical groupings is still long away from actual architecture and components which are dictated by the actual uh, software platform used or other design decisions which then lead the source code which is then compiled and cr created as a deployable software. The largest difference between concepts here is on the upper side uh, which is mostly design work and thinking work to on and on the lower side which is mostly technical things and programming and software development. So to assist the migration from the analytical architecture defined here to the actual architecture defined here we can use something like called boundary control entity analysis. So the idea is that since we have use cases which summarize the requirements and we have created the analytical architecture and behavior and structural uh, diagrams such as sequence diagrams, class diagrams or communication diagrams, we have to start dividing these abstract designs towards something that's more technical and feasible to implement from the viewpoint of software developer. So, uh, the idea is that we allocate responsibilities to classes or create definitions on what happens where. This is something that's one of the first things which is done to UML diagrams after we want to go towards uh, actually creating the structure. We start to add real functionalities and go from the analysis classes towards the classes and objects and modules that we actually have to create. So, this analysis is pretty straightforward. For each mechanical system or each interface or each user group we need one interface. For each interface we need something that actually does the heavy lifting of work and we also need to have data storage for all the information we need to store. So, the BCE, Boundary, Control and Entity is the answer to this problem. The boundary classes are an abstract class which represents the interfaces of the system, while the control class is something that represents the calculations and communications and actual flow of events, while entity class is more or less a placeholder for the data and data storage that is usually provided by something like database or simply uh, as variables of the uh, uh, universal variables of the system. So the boundaries, well, they are user interface. So they are something like uh, forms, windows, uh, systems interfaces, data communications, external interfaces, USB connections, uh, game controller connections or hardware interfaces, printers, barcode readers, or heat sensors, and these sort of things. So all these external systems or interfaces need a boundary class. It's the class that communicates, takes information from the boundary and provides information to the boundary. And in this uh, quick example, we'll see that, for example, our form is one sort of boundary. It's the uh, boundary that that sends the employee information for the system, which then is uh, which then is uh, processed by the input hours control class. So the control class 
is the actual class where all the actual uh, action happens. The contr control class is usually the one which has all the uh, sort of actual functionality of the program in it. On some places or some cases these control classes are not necessary since the uh, boundary or entity class can execute the use case without control class or provide the functionality without having to have separate calculations or analysis or activity monitoring system. But it's something that represents the difference between the boundary and uh, entity which are more or less stand-ins for interface and database. So for example in the our input uh, example the uh, input hours class could be something that our input control is something that checks that the user has filled the form in sane way, has less than 24 hours per day and has less than 31 days or less than 32 days per month. So overall this is the place where the magic happens so to say. Leaving the entity class only with the data storage retrieval and modification activities. So basically uh, entity class is a place where data is stored or where, where, from where the data is retrieved. So it more or less represents the databases or server systems. So when we go to the uh, exact uh, usage of each of these classes, I'd like to point uh, at one uh, one check here. So if the, the boundary control entity interface uh, activity database connections actually mean that for each uh, actor you need to have boundary. Boundary can connect only to control class since there has to be something behind the interface to actually manage all the inputs and outputs. The control classes can be connected to each other since it's only uh, normal that the system controlling the input output parts also is able to request things from database or send data to server and the boundary is only connected to the control class since boundary is a static jar or uh, well storage facility where all the data is and where all the data is stored but nothing is actually done to them unless control class asks to do something for them. So basically this is how the boundary control entity analysis starts. It starts from the analy uh, analytical architecture and UML designs and it's the first step towards actual architecture and the actual components that we have to create when we are uh, developing software which it then is uh, going towards actual source code and something that's deployable and functional.